Hi all. A very interesting game from Thomas Kaz this morning. So Stockfish 8 against Leela ID 10480. Stockfish was on I7, 7700, and Leela on a GTX 1080. So let's have a look at this game. Time control, 3 minutes with 2 second increments. D4 from Stockfish 8. We have the Queen's Gambit declined with Bishop E7. The opening book moves here are given to both until this point, I believe. So E takes now, Bishop F4, C6, E3 from Stockfish, Bishop F5, which does provoke G4, but is this going to be weakening? Is this a bit of a double-edged move from Stockfish? Is it a target later? Bishop E6, H4, very aggressive, Knight D7, Bishop G3, Knight B6, Going into that c4 square, it seems uh, a nice feature of black's position to support knight c4. Any tickling is going to be costly on the dark squares with the bishop on g3. Bishop d3, so knight c4 here. Uh, this is like already quite tricky. If the queen moves, then there's bishop takes g4, to bear in mind. So the queen's kind of protecting g4 here, uh, of course. <clears throat> Rook b1. And there's knight f6 hitting g4, and this position is actually quite interesting for black. Because uh, the bishop is also indirectly holding the c4 knight, so this is actually afforded by black's position. There's some very interesting possibilities here. So hitting the bishop there. Uh, and this diagonal is also potentially vulnerable. Uh, so for example of this, then queen a5. And it gets to be a bit tricky. For example, knight a3 here. The knight's kind of a danger. Uh, so this is, this is actually really tricky. On b3, there's knight b2, annoyingly, taking out the light square bishop and taking out the pawn after. So what does white do? White actually radically gave up the light square bishop. That's taken f3, knight f6, e4. So white's building, it seems, quite an impressive line of pawns here. But black does have that advanced pawn on the fifth. Knight h3. Black castles, knight f4, and now b4, which is a double offering of fragmentation. An isolated pawn here and kind of weakened pawns over here. Has Leela gone mad? White does take on e6. After f takes, isn't this pawn weak? Knight e2, isn't the c pawn a target? Knight d7, key move, get the knight round here. Queen c2, knight b6. F4 is played here. A5, H5, H6, Bishop F2, A4. These pawns are starting to look pretty impressive. In fact, look at this position. Has there been a chess position like this before? If the pawn was on H4, they have, we would have eight pawns on the fourth rank there. <laughs> so A3 is played. Queen C7. Uh, here, by the way, on b3, then maybe queen c3 is okay for white. For example, this position seems fine. So uh, black suspends any use of b3 here for a moment. Queen c7, white castles. It's now here that b3 is played. Very interesting to play b3 here. And you might think, is this exchange sack? tempting. Well, if it's played here, this exchange sack, then queen e2 is possible, which holds both pawns. So it seems one of the ideas of b3 now is to lure the queen away, so it can't double defend pawns that easily. Or can it? So, yes, an exchange sacrifice is played by Leela in this position. Is it sound? Sometimes if you can collect a pawn or two after, then uh, it can sometimes go really upward uh, trending for one's own position. So rook takes f4. Let's have a look here. On bishop g3, this wasn't played then, rook takes g4, pins the bishop with a big advantage to black. So we have queen g3 pinning the rook to the queen. Very exciting stuff. Black just supports that. And now actually, White plays this, rook a e1. 
celebrating the pin a bit further, not trying to exploit it. On trying to exploit the pin immediately, this position here of the rook f e one. Uh, this is actually quite good c3, believe it or not. This gives the c4 square for the knight. Uh, so for example, this position is very interesting from Black's point of view because uh, these pawns are very, very dangerous. Black just needs to get a3 and we'll have two connected pass pawns over here with a big advantage to Black. So a Topolovian exchange sacrifice. Topolov was, is like the master of exchange sacks. He played some real immortal games with them. Uh, so here, rook a f8. This calm move, rook a1, a e1, might be justified instead of taking immediately. We have knight d7, and now taking this exchange. Takes, and now rook c1. Uh, now, interestingly, knight b6 was played. You might think, well, hold on a sec. Why can't black take on g4? In this uh, sequence here, rook takes c4. These pawns are all pretty vulnerable. So it's an even position. So it's important to try and cling on a bit to c4, of course. Now here we have king g2. And bishop f6 is played. King g2 sets a little bit of a trap uh, tactically. If rook takes g4, then king f3, there's not many squares for the rook. If rook g5, then there's bishop h4, skewing the rook against the bishop with a big advantage to white. So very interesting position after king g2. Also interesting to consider is d5 hitting the knight tactically. In this case, check and e takes, believe, believe it or not, is interesting for black here, offering the knight, because there's so many pawns here, there's an armada of pawns, and in fact, <laughs> even this, a rook down, is going to be really dangerous for white, as long as, like, something silly doesn't happen, like c3, bishop d4 hitting g7. So keeping an eye on g7, the armada of pawns here, is actually in black's favour as they start pushing down. Free connected past pawns is very, very good here. So very, very interesting scenarios are developing now. So we have actually bishop f6, keeping the double attack for a moment on both pawns. King g3, rook takes e4. So black's pawns are pretty impressive. And it seems the knight's also got d5 now taking out e4. But hold on a sec, isn't there a problem? King f3. Oops. <laughs> oh dear, Lila has to sacrifice yet another exchange. So double exchange sack in this game. Topolov would be proud. So he did do double exchange sacks in, in a few games, Topolov. So rook takes, bishop takes. Is there enough here? Well, <laughs> it's a load of pawns, isn't it? It's three pawns. Black's got seven pawns here. And uh, b2 on the fire. So here, now c5, king e4. The knight reroutes, knight c8, king f3. The king takes the opportunity to use the f file. g5, knight d6, g takes, takes, rook bd1. e5, the king's got e6 now to play with. And it uses that, bringing the king up to the center square. This is torture, isn't it, for stockfish? Okay, so now knight g3, taking on h5. And now the knight comes here. This is just horrible. I mean, this is just horrible for white, this position. Uh, knight d3, rook f1. On rook b1, is this anything really? e4. Big advice to black. So, uh, sorry, rook f1. Knight takes b2. Yeah, <laughs> black has got a large number of pawns. So I think the double exchange sack is permitted. Here was the game. The game was actually ended here. The evaluation on both sides 
uh, massively in black's favour. If the game continues, for example, knight d1 check and knight e3, for example, is very convincing, like this check, and then b2, and then here knight b4 would be queening. So, a very, very nice game there with a double exchange sack that caught my attention. So, very nice game from Thomas Kaz. <laughs> Yeah, there are some beautiful games being demonstrated on the Leela Chess Forums. Check them out, and I hope uh, you got some insight from this one. I thought it was particularly interesting, the uh, knight d7 to b6 to c4 manoeuvre, especially because I had it played against me in a similar sort of manoeuvre in uh, British Championship by an IM once, one of the Perp brothers. I was wondering, that's a bit pedantic, isn't it? Knight you know, coming to c4, but it's really annoying. If you've got a bishop on this side of the board, try and tickle the knight in and you could be creating fatal dark square weaknesses. So, but it was it, it was used to create an advanced pawn, which was then fully supported, and the exchange sacks really celebrated this mass of pawns, making them really dangerous. The second exchange sack, I mean, it was just so many pawns for the two exchange sacks that as, approaching the end game, the pawns are just going to get more valuable. So, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean, it's the master with past pawns in the end game. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.